All right, folks. Today we're working on a GM Kelsey Hayes ABS module. They're all shaped like this for this repair. And um, I'm not sure what vehicle this is out of. I just know the repair on them. Doesn't matter what vehicle it's out of because all of these have the same repair. And they're in multiple vehicles. These screws that I'm taking out here are T8s. You can see right there where the screw is. There's one here. There's one here. There's a sneaky little one right there. It's kind of hard to find and get these kits at Harbor Freight for next to nothing and they're good enough to get the job done. Plus this one's got this skinny little shaft that helps you get down in these crevices. You also have two in here recessed down in this section here. take this off your car you don't want to take the whole pump if you take the whole pump you're gonna have brake fluid everywhere air in your brake lines you have to bleed your brakes all you need is this module off the top of your pump usually they're mounted somewhere along the frame like I think on the Tahoe's and stuff like that they're on the frame on the driver's side underneath the vehicle and uh, about a little little bit past the driver's door anyway getting these last two out sometimes is a little bit interesting I get a pair of tweezers I guess and get them out of there they're unscrewed and they're just sitting in there but uh, there we go they're out now the next step in getting these uh, apart is this section has to be separated from this section. And there's a circuit board right inside here so we got to be a little delicate about what we're doing. I use this carpet tool with a blade that looks like that. I find it the easiest way to get in there and you want to separate this little gasket seal along the edge here. So just start at one corner and I work my way around. And anytime you get to one of those screw holes, there is a little dowel pin in there and you're not going to be able to get it past that screw hole. So just lift up, go beyond the screw hole continue on about this angle works best for me now we must be at another screw hole here so we're going to move over a little bit and keep going once I get this apart you'll see the circuit board and why it is we're using a shallow blade so we don't get the circuit board while we're doing this sometimes it goes past the screw holes There's just some of them that had the little dial pins I guess we're all the way back around already. After I get to that point, um, I usually take a small screwdriver 
a little ridge in the crack not too deeply inserted and I just twist this allows me to get a little bit bigger screwdriver in the crack so I can twist even further and you'll start hearing the uh, Once you get it to that point, the screwdriver will pretty much stay. Then you can take your blade and further separate things a little bit. And I'm trying to find my bigger screwdriver now, which uh, I'm not sure where it went. We'll get one. you got your bigger screwdriver and further get this separated as you get the bigger ones in you get rid of the smaller ones keep slicing apart any of that gasket you can now see inside of here a little bit so that you can determine what you're doing and don't try not to get that board separating it good. This, by this point it's not hard to get a screwdriver in anymore. You usually run down the sides with the screwdriver. The whole goal is to stay off the board. And it starts to separate pretty quickly. Coming down this opposite side here now. With the screwdriver just working my way down. Flat blade screwdriver. And it starts to separate. And there it comes apart. When you get in here, there's several failure points. Basically, where all these little circular, um, these give it the indication you know, your G-forces or whatever, and they solder on here. These typically crack here. I see cracks here, 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 and here. And I also sometimes see some cracks on this header pin where the connector comes through the board. And it does look like this one's already been done once. So, when we're talking about these, people bring these in because their ABS light goes and starts to show, shine. And when uh, that happens, most of the time it is this ABS module. Um, however, uh, speed sensors can be bad and um, your speed sensor could be bad or any of the wiring between your speed sensor and your computer. Um, they all have to work together. So any number of your components, you've got four wheel speed sensors each, on each wheel um, on most models and then some of them have some speed sensors in the transmission. All of those have to be functional or you're going to get an ABS light. If you get an ABS light, it's best to figure out what components fail. All right. Um, what I do when I get one of these in that's already been repaired is I just go over it again. I do the repair again. And... Um, Hopefully that fixes the problem because we're already here, so we're just a matter of, of resoldering connections. So um, I go ahead and do the repair again. I send it out. If that fixes the problem, then I go ahead and charge them for it. If it doesn't, then 
we don't uh, we don't incur any charge. So, with all that said, let's get to fixing this sucker. I like to look at these things through the microscope because mostly because my eyes are bad and this is the best way for me to inspect them. So I'll look at all these solder points. If you don't have a microscope, it's not necessary that you see the cracks in the solder points. I mean, the solder process takes all of 10 minutes, 15 minutes to accomplish. So just resolder those points I showed you and you should have a pretty effective repair. Not seeing problems with this one. So he could have wheel speed sensors. Oh, there's a crack. So I got one that is cracked here. It's not looking too healthy. And oh, another one is cracked. So this one and this one. Uh, let's see if I can point a little bit clearer here. This point. Get this out of the way. This point and and was this point I have cracks on them. Oh crap! Still got the microscope in the way. This point and this point have cracks on them. So likely that is the problem. Let me look at some of these other pins real quick. So these electronics in these vehicles, they're under a lot of stress. And things like a broken motor mount that causes the engine to shake and vibrate or just rough roads, rough terrain, um, things like this. Even though these units are sealed, uh, there's not a lot of vibration dampening. So you get a lot of vibration into these, these modules. Cause those micro cracks and um, broken connections and I believe that's what we're looking at here so we're just going to get after it and re-solder what the problem is. I'm going to go over each and every point because my eyes and no matter if you've got 18 year old eyes you're still going to be susceptible to some uh, errors in what you see so we just go over everything we know to fail. The uh, flux helps. The uh, flux I use is Amtec. It seems to work the best for me. Especially some of these take some pretty high heat, so the flux will help to to uh, spread that heat out and. It will make the solder adhere to things that it's supposed to, not the things that it's not supposed to. So we're just going to goop it up here with solder. I mean, with flux. If you're having trouble soldering, most of the time the answer is more flux. And in this case, this little tiny ass iron tip that I have is not the one to go with. Something more substantial like that. Heat up. <sighs> I 
these are through hole components here so and on these especially it tends to take the solder down through the hole so there's a little technique I use which is just like I get some solder in there and then I just touch it and get off of it The more flux you use, the more that smoke you get, which God only knows what's in that. I'm sure it's bad stuff. Normally I have a solder sucker going, but it is very noisy. Or not a, a fume extractor going, but it's very noisy. and It and the camera don't get along. flux that I use is very milky looking too. You gotta get it hot and it turns very clear after that you can see through it. But until you get it hot, you can hardly see what you're doing. And these aren't as bad at they seem to have a lot on them. I'm gonna take some of the solder off of that. That look look a little much. to soldering is if it looks right usually it's right if it looks wrong usually it's wrong you can always pull the solder off and flux it again and move on Like me, some readers help, that's for sure. Of course, I guess there's not a whole lot of old YouTube viewers anymore. Who knows? If you're over 50 and watching YouTube, I do it all the time. So we have reflowed everything on there. Always good to clean up your mess when you're done. 99% alcohol is the go-to there. You don't want to get plenty of alcohol on there. And basically you're not like dissolving the flux, you're just diluting it so you can wipe it up. process is pretty simple. Paper towel. That way you can throw that nasty thing away when you're done. Sometimes it takes two or three times to get it nice and clean. Ninety-nine percent alcohol is is gonna dry up. So if you have eighty percent alcohol well, it's 80% alcohol and 20% well, probably water. And water's bad, so you don't want that in here. So take the time to get some 99% alcohol to clean your flux up.
Plus this has some old solder that wasn't cleaned up from the last time that it was attempted to be repaired. So that stuff is old and goopy. All right, and we'll inspect our work real quick. The readers help and they do a good job of uh, letting you work a little quicker, but the microscope, it is much more effective at showing you what you're doing. This one, this is too big of an iron tip. So let's switch back to our little, little tip. It's a hack of iron. It's got hot swappable tips. And I really like it when it comes to jobs like this where you're back and forth between tips. Otherwise, I would say get a couple different irons with different tips because you ain't got time to be wasting on unscrewing a tip and letting it cool down so you can get it out of there and then screwing a new tip back in and then you're waiting on it to heat up. I find that if I have to do all that, hell, I forgot what I was doing in the first place. Just looking at all these connections we made, how we improved. Those look really good. And everything looks real good. See, that one is solid. I fixed literally hundreds of these like this and occasionally you can't repair one like this but it's pretty damn rare um, I don't know on those occasions what it is that's causing it to not be repairable but um, I'm, I'm telling you the percentage that can't be fixed like this is is very rare so if you get one of those, get you another module. And um, hopefully in the future, GM will get a little better at building some dampening vibration into these and we won't have this problem. All right, so going back together with these, pretty straightforward, got to seal them back up. I use this. It's just a basic gasket maker. And uh, like every one of these things, if you've used them before, the tip is all dried up and sealed. So we're gonna have to get that unclogged first. Let's see if I got something sharp and pokey to stick it with. That never works. You just poke a hole in the middle. Again. Another use for the paper towels on this is a cleaning tool back off. And you can toss that paper towel. So on this, you just want to get a little bead going around this thing so it seals back up. And I might 
I'm going to poke another hole or two because it's slow. rolled up like a toothpaste tube and oh there we go now it's coming out if you get this stuff on you you're gonna wear it for days it takes about three showers to get it all off <laughs> so you don't want it on you a q-tip or something like that if you need to spread it screwdriver tip any of that stuff will work now we'll put on the uh, sealant cap that never seals and works all right place your top back on try not to get this all over you got it on my bench which is better than me so we will be able to wipe that up at least Put your screws back in now some of these come without screws um, if you got one of the ones without screws then just get some I use, let's see what I use here, these clamps that I have, let's see if I've got an example of them. These bad boys, just uh, clamp them together and let it seal, let it set up and seal. Basically any clamp will do, don't have to be that type of clamp. I would stay away from clamping on top of these. You don't want to put any pressure on those solder points that are underneath them that we just fixed. careful with those not to drop them in they can be a problem if they uh, miss the hole and you got to get them back out of there and this one can't see the hole get a little extra light on it here and see if I can see it Goop easing through the oozing through the hole in it. Ah. Got that crap on my oiler shirt, man. That ain't gonna fly. Now we have an emergency. I might have to call somebody on that. These oiler shirts. Oiler shirts, they hard to find these days. That was my team back in the day. Back when it was Bum Phillips and Earl Campbell and 
Billy White Shoes Johnson. Warren Moon. There was a bunch of heroes I had back then. I love your blue days. So, did pretty good. Got a little bit right there. And a little bit right there. But that'll be there for a couple of days. <laughs> so there you have it. All done. Goop oozing out. It's not as pretty as it was when we started, but it's sealed. And sealed is better than not. Do your customer a favor if you're a shop. Let that sucker sit up until it uh, is dry so they don't get it all over them. Or just set it on a, self, a shelf for a few hours yourself until it's dried up and uh, cured. And uh, you won't have to get that crap all over you. Putting my tools away. One more job done on a rainy day in San Antonio. Rain, good thing. Hey guys, remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell if you want to see the new videos as they post. And share with your friends. Maybe we'll all get smarter learning from each other. Thanks a lot.